Do you like Final Fantasy? Do you like Pokemon? Then look no further than World of Final Fantasy. Chanka inspired gameplay. Exploitation of nostalgia. Cute. All this can be yours for the low, low price of your will to live. Call us now 1 800 777 777 for a chance to win a condom that looks like Cloud Scrap. On a more serious note, World of Final Fantasy came out in 2016 for the PlayStation 4 and Vita. It also came out in 2017 for Windows and 2018 for Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. It is, as I said before, a mix of Pokemon and Final Fantasy, and somehow the best modern Final Fantasy game because Final Fantasy 15 was. Eh. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good either. Then again, I haven't played it since 2017, so it's much better now because of patches, probably. But that's beside the point, because World of Final Fantasy will always be better. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. The easiest way to sum up this game's art style is to say it is cute, but it doesn't really do it justice. Plus, I need to stretch out the video's length to increase my watch time, so there's that. As you can see, it takes inspiration from Chibi and those weird Funko Pop things I have way too many of. And that's really all I can say about how it looks, but I don't really feel like I've done it enough justice yet, so I'll just show you a few clips of gameplay to really flaunt it. The soundtrack of this game is great, especially if you are a Final Fantasy fan. It uses a combination of remixes of music from past games, and a fair amount of fully original music. In fact, it's so good that I'm going to break away from my usual formula, and show you 10 amazing songs in the soundtrack instead of just a big long list. The entire soundtrack is worth a listen, but these are my personal favorites, so get your popcorn, your soda, and your headphones, because this is going to be fun. The basic premise of this story can be easily explained by the game's title, World of Final Fantasy. It is a world of Final Fantasy. Anyways, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Please share and subscribe for more amazing content. This has been Axmilla. Goodbye! <music> On a more serious note, this story follows Rain and Lawn, two twins who suddenly wake up in Ninewood Hills, a world where no one is there except for them and two strangers. One is a fox creature called Tama, who is a very important character in the story, and you should pay attention to what she says. Always. And the other is Anacro, aka God, that direct the twins to the land of Grimoire to unlock the secrets of their missing parents and their weird markings on their hands. Grimoire, for those of you who don't know, has a majority of the Final Fantasy fan service in it. You'll find Cloud, Terra, Lightning, Tidus, Squall, Shantado, Aiko, Riku, Warrior of Light. Chocolina. <laughs> Snow! <laughs> the gameplay of World of Final Fantasy has a lot of layers, so forgive me if the organization isn't too great. First of all, the basic stuff. You have two menu types you can switch between. The first is basic, which really isn't that basic since it's a bunch of confusing hockey garbage that no one cares about. The second one is classic, which is the one that you should be using since it's easy and not stupid. Within the combat menu, you have several options. You can attack, use items, flee, and defend. 
but that's where the similarities with most other RPGs end. The first big difference is magic, mostly because the game doesn't give you a whole lot of magic points, or AP as it's called in this game. So basically, you'll be relying on items a lot. The second big difference would be the champion medals, which allow you to summon Final Fantasy characters to do something fanservice-y for a lot of damage. These use up a special resources specifically for them, and some use them more than others. Plus, you can only have three equipped at a time, and some have elemental properties. So choose carefully by not picking snow. The Pokemon side of things comes from the Imprison system. The game lets you capture monsters, or mirages as they're known in this game, with prisms that work almost completely the same as Pokeballs. However, you have to get the enemy into a capturable state, which is different for each monster type. These requirements can range from dealing enough damage to it to straight up healing it, and it makes you pay attention to the enemy to ensure you don't accidentally kill them, as repeating the same action without killing them will increase your odds of capturing them. Another big aspect of the Imprison system is how they are incorporated into fights once you've captured them, because instead of fighting alongside you, you stack them, because why not, it makes complete sense, I know I'd stack things in my head if I was in a fight. Anyways, there are multiple factors to consider when it comes to stacking enemies. First, we have the stats and weaknesses of each Mirage. These are all added together, so you definitely want to pick monsters that have good stats and few weaknesses. Second of all, you have sizes. There are four different sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. Extra large mirages are special, as they can be summoned like champions and not used in normal means. However, unlike champions, you can pick attacks instead of having the same fixed attack each time. Each action you take with one of these big boys takes AP, and when that stuff runs out, that mirage is gone for a long time. Most of these mirages also have big special attacks that do a lot of damage, but they usually take more, or most of your SP, so you should definitely use them for that mirage's final attack. Anyways, where was I? Ah yes, monsters that hide in your pockets. They come in a variety of sizes, but that actually isn't all that important compared to the next mechanic, toppling. When you are stacking your characters, stability is increased or decreased, which affects how easily enemies can knock over your stack. And if this unholy predicament falls upon you, your entire stack will fall over and be stunned for a few seconds. This can also happen to the enemy as they come in stacks as well. The reason that the toppling mechanic is so important is because the combat system was carefully designed around it. Turns in this game will only happen when the little meter on the side has a character portrait at the top. The speed at which you reach the top is affected by the agility stat, so try to have high agility on both of your stacks at once, especially in the late game, because they get fast. Now it's time for excess ramblings about side content and general information that is important to know. They recently released a DLC to the game titled World of Final Fantasy Maxima, which adds new content and fixes some minor gameplay issues. I haven't actually dipped my toes into it though, so this review will be structured as though the Maxima DLC hasn't come out yet. You can partake in two different types of side quests. The first are mini-ventures, your standard JRPG side quests, and the second are intervention quests. These are far more interesting and allow you to fight powerful bosses, with a lot more context than mini-ventures give. Make sure you do a lot of these because they really help you out later down the line. There are plenty of extra dungeons unlock once you beat the game. Beat the ones that are in the vanilla version of the game and you'll unlock a super boss that is a callback to one of Square's PS1 titles. When you get to the final dungeon, and you'll know when you see it, grind, 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 because you will need those levels if you want to survive the final boss. You can skip the minigames during the main story. Thank me because I just saved you tons of time and frustration. When your mirages unlock the ability to evolve, You'll be allowed to switch freely between evolutions and be able to keep any stat increases gained between them. Abilities are evolution specific though. Mira jewels are things that allow you to give Rain and Lawn special attributes and can be very helpful, so be sure to utilize them. You can change the battle theme in the config menu to something from an older Final Fantasy game. All right, you should also know that you can switch between wait, active, and semi-active modes in the game. For those of you who don't know, it essentially changes the pace at which battles move, and I highly recommend you try all of them to see which one you like more. Throughout the game are these little things called Merc Rifts. They're usually way higher level than the zone that they are found in, so I'd highly recommend you don't do them unless you want this to happen. When you die, you are sent back to Nunwood Hills, and you'll keep all the things you had before dying, except your progress through the dungeon. However, dying in specific circumstances will lead to a game over. 
These scenarios are entirely boss exclusive, however, so rest easy when you are level grinding or progressing through story content. And finally, when you unlock access to the Nether Nebula dungeon, grind for the upcoming boss fight because the bosses have some attacks that can one-shot your party at full health and they can be spammed. World of Final Fantasy is a great game, and while it's more original cousin was soaking up most of the Final Fantasy fans, this one was just kind of sitting in the corner, playing with people who did notice it. Funnily enough, I'd say this is the better game between the two. It has the better story, the better gameplay, great music, a gorgeous art style that won't age a day, and a whole lot of cute. So please, when you hear someone saying that Final Fantasy hasn't been good in years, you can tell them that they are wrong. And with that, I hope that you share and subscribe for more cool content. Like this video because, you know, supports me, yay. This has been Axe Mella. Goodbye!